Guest was one of the top 25 Wall Street bankers in the 1990s and a former MD of Salem Smith Barney, now part of Citibank. He's the best selling author of The Next Common Sense Mastering Corporate Complexity Through Coherence. Dr. Michael Lizak argues with everything from floods to cyclones to people's revolutions, the GFC and WikiLeaks, that people need to understand what he thinks is important and what's the relevance for investors in the stock market. Michael Lizak joins me in Melbourne. How are you, Michael? You're in Australia. You're talking about the importance of understanding complexity theory. What in the hell is complexity theory? The biggest thing to focus on with complexity is that when you rely on labels and rules and fixed categories, you sometimes are throwing the baby out with the bathwater because what matters is the weak signals, the things that you might How regard as... How many people here are familiar with Ashby's principle of requisite variety? Almost everybody. Good. Now, have you thought about how requisite variety applies to Donald Trump? <laughs> it's about the mess that we're in. And the mess is not just, gee, America elected Donald Trump and the UK decided he was leaving Europe. The mess is a more general mess. What has happened is that we are in a world that is plagued by uncertainty and doubt. And the very things that we trust in, we've lost our sense of trust. We've lost the things that we trust in. And until we find a way of resolving that, we're going to be in this mess for a long time. One villain is we have spent the past 50 years in what people like to call the information age. The other is us. And they come together in, we have this interesting notion that computers think in a certain way. And the mythology, starting 50 odd years ago, was that computers think like we do. Well, they don't. And instead, what has happened is that we have started thinking like computers do. And all of the things that make us human, we've given away. So we're very good at shades of gray. We're very good at ambiguity. We're very good at the idea that you could hold two or three different conflicting ideas in your head at the same time and not be paralyzed. Computers are very bad at all of those things. So I don't know how many of you can read up what's up there, but it doesn't really matter. What truthiness is, is when something feels right to you, and it doesn't have to be based on any notion of facts. Facts are irrelevant. What matters is how do you feel. If it feels right, it's truthy. And I will submit to you that the current president of the United States is a man who functions almost exclusively on truthy. Watching the news over the past week or so, there's all this discussion about alternative facts and disprovable things. It's a, uh, none of that matters. What matters is what he's feeling that moment. And by the way, the joy of truthies is you can have multiple truthies that are successively true. So if in the morning he feels that, oh, we're going to build a wall, then that's the truth thing, we're going to build a wall. He goes to lunch and somebody suggests this is not really a good idea, and he thinks about it over lunch, and he goes, nah, maybe we're not going to build a wall. That's the truth thing. <laughs> then somebody from the news media says, but you said you were going to, oh, you're right, I'm going to build a wall. That's the next truth thing. The truth thing is are easily adjusted. There's no problem. There's no Do you think Donald Trump is actually going to win and be the next president of the United States? Unfortunately, I do think that. I think it's absolutely inevitable because of two things. One, change when a country is unhappy, and our country is unhappy, always beats the status quo. And a good story told with room for the listener is always much better than a filled-in one where there's no room. And Donald's empty rhetoric is a vessel for people's hopes, their dreams, their fears, their angers, their frustrations. And all Hillary says is, here I am. Be with me. I'm with her. It's just not an effective opposition. How are your colleagues in the uh, inspirational, educational, and higher learning areas responding to you when you talk about it like this? And talk about the idea of studying Trump as an as academic adventure. They're appalled. They have nothing they can really say in disagreement with me other than, but look at the content and look at how empty, etc. And I'm going, you're missing the point. 
the point is he's capturing the emotion and you're not looking at the emotion. And then they say, well, what about the Democratic firewall? And I'm like, but people aren't going to vote based on D and R. They're going to vote based on change versus more of the same. Change is going to win.